Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about glioblastoma on MRIT2 and flare sequences. We will be only focusing on T2 and flare images of the brain regarding glioblastoma and studying their features in these two sequences. On the left, we have a T2 weighted image of a normal brain. T2 weighted images highlight fluid as bright or hyper intense. The white matter appears darker or hypo intense than the gray matter because of its higher myelin content which shortens T2 relaxation. The cerebrospinal fluid appears bright white. The bone cortex, air, and flowing blood in vessels appear black. On the right, we have a T2 image showing a mass in the parietotemporal lobe, which was a glioblastoma. A glioblastoma appears bright in a T2 image. These hyperintense areas correspond to edema, infiltrating tumor, and necrotic components. The central necrosis often appears heterogeneously hyperintense due to mixed fluid content. This is the mass, and it is surrounded by vasogenic edema. This is the edema. This is another T2 image showing a glioblastoma. The mass is hyperintense, and it is surrounded by edematous regions. This is vasogenic edema. Vasogenic edema is the accumulation of fluid and proteins in the brain's extracellular space caused by a breakdown of the blood-brain barrier. This mass is heterogeneous, with these brighter areas having more cystic necrotic components and these less brighter regions have more solid components. Edema is also noted here. Comparison of T2 images with T1, T1 contrast, and flare images is very helpful in diagnosis of glioblastoma. In some cases, you may see flow voids on T2 images. A flow void appears as hypo-intense tubular or serpiginous areas inside a mass. This is seen when there is rapid blood flow within a vessel, so you may find these flow voids in some glioblastoma cases. Also, there is edema near the tumor. This mass is less hyperintense than the previous cases. It has some bright areas, but is mostly heterogeneous. For these types of masses, evaluation in T1 contrast sequence which will show peripheral enhancement with a hypo-intense central core. These findings help greatly in diagnosis. Ultimately, a correct diagnosis is done after evaluating all relevant sequences. Here is another T2 image showing a glioblastoma. The hyperintense mass can be seen with a slightly heterogeneous and hypo-intense irregular border and it is surrounded by vasogenic edema, which also appears hyperintense. Midline shift is noted due to the mass effect. Here are coronal T2 images of the brain. A large mass is present. It is an irregularly shaped mass with hyperintense and heterogeneous areas. Flow voids are also present in this case. These are the flow voids. The hypo-intense tubular structures. Edema is also noted. Edema usually appears more homogeneous than the mass. Due to this homogeneity, we are able to distinguish it from the mass. Ventricular compression and midline shift are also noted. Now we will look at flare sequences. In a flare image, the cerebrospinal fluid appears dark. There is no MR signal from it. However, edema and gliosis will still appear bright in a flare image. The gray-white matter differentiation is still visible but less stark than on T1. This image is of a glioblastoma. The mass still appears hyperintense in a flare image. And we can see hyperintense and somewhat more homogeneous edema surrounding the mass. 
Flare suppresses CSF signal, so this makes the tumor and edema more prominent. Here is another case of a glioblastoma. In this flare image, the mass is hyperintense and vasogenic edema is also hyperintense but has a smoother, homogeneous appearance. This mass has a more cystic appearance than the previous cases, which is why it appears hypointense. It consists of more free fluid like or CSF like components, which led to its dark appearance on this flare image. The edema appears hyperintense and surrounds the mass. Mass effect and midline shift are present. Comparing this with other images, especially T1 contrast image, which will show peripheral enhancement and central hypointense core, this indicates a glioblastoma. This is the same case in the sagittal plane. The mass is predominantly cystic and is surrounded by hyperintense edema. Here we have a different case of a glioblastoma in the coronal plane. This is the mass. It is hyperintense and heterogeneous, and it is surrounded by hyperintense and somewhat homogeneous edema. Mass effect is noted. It has caused ventricular compression and a mild midline shift. We currently focused on T2 and flare images of the glioblastoma, but for a diagnosis, we have to study all the sequences such as T1, T1 contrast, T2, flare, DWI, ADC, SWI, and others. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.